Hey guys, welcome to a vault tutorial. So at the start of the video I showed you guys what a completed vault design could look like. This is uh, I guess the first part of the design complete. So this is a working opening door. So if we can just press this button you can see that this uh, gate gets pulled up. You get some flashing lights to let you know that the gate has been opened. And then after a little bit of time, the gate automatically closes. So I think that's pretty cool. Nice concept for some kind of vault or secure door opening. So I think this is going to work quite nicely. Now, I do have these note blocks that you could tell that was no sound coming out of them at the moment. That's because we need a block right here. So I'm just going to put a block. This is what the inside wall needs to be. Whatever block choice you want for the walls, you just need to pull a block there. So this redstone dust will power this block and that will in turn power the note block, so let's press this button again. I think there's a pretty cool alarm kind of design, so you've got both the flashing lights and you've got the note blocks. Definitely is going to uh, alert any nearby players that you've been breached, <laughs> your main doorway has been opened and then you can work on some extra contraptions for the vault design. So what I'm going to do here is just mark out the area for where you would walk in, just so I think it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on here. So this can be the entrance where you can walk on in. And then on the other side here, this is where we're going to have the space you can walk on through. So let's just put a few blocks here as well. Then what I'm going to do is just put in the walls. And you can see where we've positioned the blocks around here. You can go back an extra block for the wall design. Just makes it uh, having a nicer look, I think. So you can have this nice and flush um, along the sides, so you can have this little inlet here. And we can repeat this all the way around, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now that we've got a basic interior for this tunnel design for this door, let's open it again. See that uh, there's no visible redstone, you can see that everything is nicely concealed. These lights flash on and off quite nicely and the opening and closing animation is pretty smooth. Then if you want to add in another secure door out the back here, which had a combination lock to open, I think this is a nice touch for a secure vault design. So there's a multi-part system to be able to get into the real secure area. So what I was doing, I was building in just a little enclosed section just here. So this is where we can have another doorway. So let's just put down some extra blocks here. And then basically we're going to have a door right back in here. So let's just put down another set of blocks. This is where we're going to have the door. Something like that. And then we can just fill in these side sections. This is Joe's just going to outline the basic shape for how we're going to have this room laid out. Now if you want to close this off, we can just increase the height here. And then put these blocks here. And if you want to be really evil and install a lava dispenser system, just as an extra safety guard, you can just knock out this block, put down a dispenser facing downwards like so, grab yourself a lava bucket, and just put that in there. And then let's just get ourselves out through here for the time being. Then all we need to do is put a small bit of redstone right on top. So we can just do that. And now when we open and close this door, this lava is going to be dispensed and then retrieved. So let's just close up this door again, and then we'll open the door. You can see the lava gets dispensed. And the way that the lava is going to flow out, it's going to give the player just enough time to potentially try and find a way to open up the next secure door. And if they don't open in time, then the lava is going to be the death of them. So that is a pretty cool trick. And it's a nice little touch for an extra security measure. Because um, when you've got this room filled with lava, you can see that the lava takes a while to drain away. It's nicely filling up every spot of the ground in here. So there's no safety area. If a player is trapped on this other side, they won't be able to escape the lava. So that's a nice little security measure. So if you want to work on this doorway, now what I had showed was a combination lock to open and close this. So one way you can do that is just use an item frame. So let's grab ourselves an item frame and you can put anything you want inside it. I'm just going to use a redstone torch. And where are we going to put this? Let's put it over here. Actually, let's, let's put it over here. This is going to give us a little bit more room to play with. 
I'm just going to put an item in here um, because what I had here, just to give yourself a little bit more lighting over in this side of the room, I just made this uh, an always-on redstone lamp. So what we can now do is let's just go on the outside. So let's first light up these redstone lamps, make sure it's nice and lit up on the inside. And then we're going to put down some blocks to detect where in the item frame do we have the position of the item. So for that, we'll just put down a comparator right here then run that into some blocks. We need to go eight blocks along here. So that's two, four, six, and eight. Then we need to run two blocks here and step down. So remove that block, put that one there, then run this along the side all the way to the corner. And then we need to repeat the same on the opposite side here. So we need to put down the block, put down the redstone comparator on top, to detect the position of the item. Run this along eight blocks, then go two extra, then step on down, and then run this along the side as well. This is going to be used to detect which combination lock are we controlling the door with. So we need to connect up these two lines over here, and then we're going to run some extra inputs into the door itself. I can remove this block, get rid of that one, and like that. Now let's put down the redstone dust. So we just need to run dust all the way along the top, and then here as well, like so. Almost done, some redstone dust along here. Put down a repeater right there this side as well. Some more redstone dust here, and then some dust along here, and a torch right there. So at the moment this door is now open. We don't have any combination set to open this at the moment, so let's put in a combination. So let's put this into the neutral position. Okay, so both are in the neutral position. So if I want maybe this to be the combination, so this one and this one, what we need to do is detect where along this line of yellow wall do we have the signal strength. So here is the signal strength. So wherever you have the combination set, that's where you need to put down a redstone torch. So you can see this is where it's traveling right here. It's not powered here, but it is powered here. That's where we're placing that redstone torch. And then on the other side here, this is where we have the redstone torch. So just like that, that's going to control when this door is now open. Now, you might think if I were to change the combination, this door will close if I can get in through the door. So let's change the combination. Now the door did not close. So it closed there, but did not close when we're in a higher position here. Now the reason for that is that we need to put in a overflow detection. So you can see the redstone dust has traveled further along this line. It's turning off this torch, but it's also not deactivating this line of the, the circuit. So what we need to do is put in a repeater one block over, so right here. So if we have a redstone torch here that's being powered, one block over, and then we need to put down a repeater. Now the only difference on this other side, and it really just matters of what combination you want to have, if you want the torch to be in the final position, that's the only time when you don't need to put a repeater one block over. So if I wanted to have the combination have this torch turning off, we would need to have a repeater here, that's the only time that you won't need a repeater is when you're in the final position here. So like that. So now let's see if we can activate this door only on a certain combination. So it should be turning on only in a certain combination. So now you can see the door is closed. Still trying to open it, won't open. Now it will open. So if I'd put in any other combination, this door will stay closed. I have to be in the exact combination for this door to open. So I think that's pretty cool. And you can easily change the combination just by moving the position of the redstone torch, then adding in the repeater as long as it's not in the final position. So let's reset this combination to keep the door locked. And then we'll try opening this door. We've got the lava in place in the dispenser. Let's just close up this door. 
And let's just see what happens when I press it and I don't try and open this door. You can see the lava's going to, need to come in, going to flood this room. We've got everything off the ground, so everything's quite protected. And the door's going to close before the lava spills into this room. So everything's okay if you want to put down flower pots or anything on this side. It's not going to get destroyed by the lava. So that works out quite well for us. And you can see the lava's going to hang around for a while. So if you're not quick enough to open up the combination through into this door, then you're going to have a bad day trying to survive this lava. But now you can see the... Whoops. <laughs> you can see the lava is now drained away. So let's try and open this. Now we remember the combination, let's see if we can open it in time. So let's come on through. This has to be in this position. This has to be in the last position. You see the door opens up. We can get on through the door just in time before the lava gets us. So it's a nice secure system. You gotta be quick, you gotta know the combination. If you don't know the combination, you're gonna have a bad time. So once all your redstone is in place, you can work on the interior. You can change things up to make it look a little bit nicer. Make sure you keep everything off the ground on this side of the door, otherwise we'll get destroyed by the lava. And then you can build your main vault room. Here we've got some solid blocks of diamond, something you might want to keep secure in your own world. It's a nice area for a vault design. And then before you leave, make sure you close the combination. Just reset the combination so the door closes behind you. You don't want to leave it open for someone just to be able to wander on through. And if you're worried about not having enough time to be able to open the combination, to be able to open the door, what you can do is just increase the height of the dispenser. So here I've moved it up one extra block. So when the lava flows down, it's actually going to give the player a little bit extra time to get the combination right. So let's just see this in action. I'm going to put down a button to escape here. So let's open up the door. And you'll see the lava in this combination is just going to flow down in one single line like this and then spill out. So in this kind of pattern, it's going to give the player a little bit extra time to be able to activate or to uh, get the combination right to open the door. So that's something else you could consider. So hopefully you like this design. Have fun building it. Have fun keeping all your valuables secured behind a vault door. And hopefully you can uh, try this out in your own world. So happy building, have fun, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.